So today is a very special day on the channel because it is the beginning of my favorite time of the year. Now, technically speaking, fall doesn't start for a little bit yet, right? Sure but fall soaps, they start early. So today is the first of so, so many fall soaps because I do love making them so very much. And I will tell you all about what the inaugural fall soap is this year. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And as I said, today is the first of our fall soaps, and we will have a bunch. But for today and the next three days following, we are going to be doing some really cool wood grain soaps, which I love. I love making a good wood grain. I've been obsessed with the pour for years and have tried multiple ways of making a cool wood grain. And I'm going to show you essentially four of those ways over the next four days. Today, we are starting off with the falling leaves soap. Now, every fall I do something involving leaves because that's my favorite time of the year, growing up in Colorado, watching the leaves change and the reds and the oranges and the, it was stunning. And I definitely like, a, like to give a good nod to, you know, that. And this particular bar, we're doing it completely different because normally with a fall leaves thing, I usually put in, I usually put like uh, leaves on the top of the bar, and I decided to flip the script for this one. And instead of putting them on the top of the bar, putting them inside of the mold before we pour, and kind of see what we get with that. So we will be working with this really cool scent blend. It is a chestnut birch that is absolutely delightful, very woodsy, tree-y. You're walking through the forest to you know be one with nature and all of the things. It's awesome, and the pour pretty cool, so let's go check it out and see what came of it. Okay, so we are doing something a little bit different with the slab mold today. Now, I have started this out, you know, the, the, the placing of the leaves and everything, and I'm just gonna show you the final, you know, placement in the last line there, really, because it was tedious. How often do I say tedious? A bunch. My Mr. Soap and Clay actually made a comment and said that it kind of sounds like I don't like making soap. And that's super not true. I love everything about soap. It's just uh, these things, when I get these ideas to do the things, I, I don't have much of an intention span. And so, like, you know, five minutes in, I'm just done. Like, can I be done now? And it's just, no, I can't be done. I have to keep going. So this is just the final placement of the leaves. We just went from a couple different colors of blue to some yellows and golds and orange and some like orangey reds. And again, this is a slab mold, so all of those colors will be represented within each bar. Now I am laying down the leaves and then going to pour on top of them, which is actually a little bit different than what, you know, is normally done when you're putting embeds like this on. So usually the embeds go on or the, you know, it goes on the top as like decoration. But since we are making a, um, a wood grain soap today, I wanted to make sure that the beautiful end pattern was what was shown on the back of the bar and not the sort of the back of a slab mold because usually that it's it's still pretty but it's usually kind of like it's like modeled it's not as cool and crisp as a proper wood grain and so I just flipped the script and said well we're gonna work from the top down instead of the bottom up in a slab which is you know a little bit different now I have 
four different colors that are going into this pour for the wood grain that I showed you and clumsily tried to hold all in my hands at the same time. I'm glad I didn't let go of them. Would have ruined my oils. And I also have two different containers with the kaolin clay there. Now the reason for that is because this soap is scented with a chestnut and birch, which tends to discolor, as well as a blood orange. So I really love the very big, uh, like, green tree-y scents that come from the chestnut and birch. It's absolutely delightful. Um, and, but I wanted to get like a sort of sweeter scent in there as well. So I went with an orange to kind of blend the three together. And it's delightful all together. But I am actually using the blood orange in the white portion of the soap because the orange does not discolor. The chestnut and birch does. And so I will be using that in the four beakers here in the, you know, accent colors. But really, in actuality, because we have four accent colors and I'm filling these pretty full, so it's about seven to eight ounces per beaker there. I'm really splitting this batch 50-50. So it's gonna be essentially 50% chestnut birch, 50% blood orange, one-to-one -one ratio between the two. Really good scent combination, or, you know, one-to-one -one between the three, whatever. Really good scent combination. It's absolutely delightful. It smells of fall, which, you know, it's a falling leaf soap. I hope it smells of fall and not, hey, here's some mango, which I actually guess would be kind of cool. You could do some cool things with mango in the fall. You could do like a mango patchouli. That would be delightful. Or even a mango with like a balsam. Ooh, that would be interesting because you have like a cold and like the sweet from the mango. We're not making a mango soap today. We're making a blood orange, chestnut, and birch. Now, we're going to mix the colors that have been prepared with the super fat. And the super fat with this is within these beakers. And I super fatted with argan oil today because I love argan oil and I always have a bunch of it. So I'm using that. And the chestnut and birch blend is here mixed with the kaolin so quite a bit of kaolin going into this guy and then for the remaining batter we will put the blood orange into it and so I will dump the entire thing out into that guy and go from there orange is a really wonderful you know essential oil to use in soap it's very hard to get to stick through saponification though so that's another reason why it's nice to ground it with something else and I have found weirdly that you wouldn't really, I guess it's the kind of like, I don't know, nutty finished tone from a chestnut uh, or a birch to that, but it grounds the, the citrus really well and allows it, make sure that it sur survives saponification, which is, you know, good. And just a little bit of that into the white batter, just to make sure that I'm not putting too much of a, of a scent load into my four you know, containers here because I do not want that batter to get thick. And if you put too much of your essential oil or your fragrance oil or whatever it is that you're using into you know, soap batter, while it does all kind of come out in the wash during saponification, it all sort of mellows out and the bar itself is fine if you get a little bit too much in one section. Um, with this particular pour, because it's a, it's a variation of a thin lines pour, you want the batter to be very, very fluid. And so I put just a little bit more of that chestnut and birch into the white portion. Not so much that it's going to discolor it, but enough that, you know, I don't have to worry about the other four beakers getting too thick. Now we are ready for the pour. And now it is pour time. And so like I said, this is a variation on a thin lines pour. And so the idea is you want to pour just a little bit of each of the colors kind of light don't don't pour it too high you don't want it to go down into the uh the the white portion too terribly much right now just a little bit just at the top to then pour into the mold and you sort of continue doing this over and over again as you you know then pour down the wall of your of your mold be it a slab mold like this or you know a loaf mold or you know whatever and so just a little bit's going to go in, just back and forth motions, very methodical with it. Now, when you are pouring a wood grain, there are some cool tips and tricks that you can do to make sure you get like sort of knots 
in the wood grain pattern as well as to make sure that you have some some good lines that are straight and not well, I mean like I will show you in the cut so you'll know what I what I'm talking about but I did want to play with uh, different versions of uh, thickness of these colors because funsies and so on the other side of the mold I am doing a darker uh, more essentially of the accent colors and less of the white really to continue on just to show the difference and see which one I like for the ultimate you know final batches that get made with this right because this is these are all on the channel they're all essentially my test batches right so I'm playing with it I make some changes if I want to I decide which one I like the best and then I go from there and so we have a sort of light version on the left side and a darker wood version on the the right and that's you know what we're what we're doing and I will figure out after the cut which one I like more and make you know the rest of the batches to look like to look like that one of the cool things about you know doing the YouTube channel actually is you guys my setzers you you comment and you say which ones you like and that actually helps guide me for future pours which is really cool cuz I totally listen to you you guys are totally awesome and yeah, so far so good with the leaves on the bottom, right? I was a little bit concerned about movement and I didn't want those um, leaves to shift and I haven't seen them do so. So I think we are in the clear. I think everything's going to be great with this and um, I'm excited for it. I have no idea what's going to... There's definitely some white spaces between the leaves. So the soap batter is going to make its way through there but also I kind of want that like that's one of the another benefit of putting the leaves on the bottom and then pouring over the top as opposed to just putting them on at the end you have better control of how far into the um, the batter the leaves are because essentially they're being poured over instead of you just kind of gently pressing them into the top of it and hoping that you don't make the thing all uneven I mean it's a big old thing. So I'm curious to see what this does or what the other side looks like. And I'm not really worried about adhesion, but I am worried about maybe too much seepage. Oh, that lower right hand corner, it got too much of a turn on it. And so that I moved the beat, the, the container too fast. And so there's that, that kind of swirly bit there. That's totally going to show up in the end soap and so it's not going to be like a straight you know line like you would see with when you cut soap or cut wood but also when you you know look at a piece of wood it's not always straight either I mean depends on how the the, the wood was milled really and so I don't think that'll it looks cool it really does look very pretty and yeah, here just to finish it up, I'm just going to bang everything down and I really need to get my camera further away from the the table so it stops bouncing the camera. Sorry. And then I'm going to take uh, the skewer and just clean up a couple of the areas that I feel like need a little bit more wood uh, grain look things to them. I mentioned we were doing a wood grain, right? Wood grain. That's, that's the theme for the first round of the uh, fall soaps really so wood scent wood grain leaves come from trees trees are made of wood all, all the things yeah fall, falling leaves it's it, it's a thing now this is going to get covered and not see popped because we do have melt and pour on the bottom and I don't want that to melt and we can cut it tomorrow and see what we've got Okay, it is cut day. This has uh, set up in the mold for about 12 hours or so. And I'm going to pull it out and see what we have going on here. And I'm showing you that whole process because y you know how sometimes things are dumpster fires on here and sometimes there are explosions on my counter and so this might have been one of those moments and I didn't know. So, I mean, not an explosion, obviously, but wouldn't it be funny if I went to peel that back and all of the leaves just came off with it? Funny and a very tragic and, oh, Mrs. Selfing Place life is just this kind of way. But, you know, it didn't. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? Ah, that is so cool. 
I love that. That, it's like a really cool mosaic. I have a neighbor, a dear friend, who does like mosaic work and it totally reminds me of the stuff that she does. I mean, she's like a real artist, so it looks cooler than that, but soap form, hey, that's not too bad. And I'm excited to see, you know, what each of the individual bars look like when they, they get cut out because obviously you have the big piece here, but the thing that's going to matter is how each of the bars look like, how each of the bars look on their own, right? Standing on their own, do they all look like a wood grain soap? And the inside of that is just beautiful. I love that. And the other side with the cool, the leaves, come on, that's cool. That's really cool. I, I'm a fan. This is a, yeah, this is, I'm, I wish I was cutting faster so we could turn them all over and see the other side as well as, you know, what each bar looks like on its own. But even that part that was all swoopy, that's still going to be a really pretty bar. So very excited for that for sure. And yeah, they're all starting to take form and this is what the, uh, total and soaps are going to look like and yeah I can I can go with wood grain for that that is so pretty oh my gosh let's let's check these babies out that is delightful there's the good lines going through all the sides and that is cute which is the top or the in the bottom what, what part is the top and what parts the bottom though right are the falling leaves the top because it would be the top if I was you know doing this regular but also that's beautiful so which works that one might be my favorite that is really pretty the grays almost look blue in that and that's just absolutely stunning I really enjoy that bar yeah so I don't I don't know I don't know which one is the better which side is the top and which side is the bottom really I can't I don't know I, I like them both I mean ultimately I can only stamp one side because the leaves will not stamp well but most of the time I don't stamp my slabs anyway because I just don't I don't know why I don't that one is gorgeous too my goodness that is so beautiful and yeah that with the swoop and so you have the in the left hand there's the uh, the left side there's the one that had the darker lines and then the stuff on the right that was the lighter color with more of the white with the accent colors and for the purposes of you know the, the leaves standing out i think the white is probably better but i really like the variation that we're getting in the dark one that has more dark than white so i'm not 100 percent sure which one that is so beautiful oh my god yeah i don't I don't know which is the top which is the which is the top which is the front which is the back I don't know this is this is a hard one to determine but every single one is gorgeous no matter what way you look at it which is a huge success I mean it's win it's it's good I I love wood grain soaps I do them a lot but you know it's day 160 the first wood grain in the fall line the first of the fall soaps and yeah so far so good this is these are babes yeah i still don't know which side i like better right so i don't know if i like the leaves or the wood grain they're both beautiful and i'm having a really hard time deciding which is the front of the bar and i guess it really doesn't matter i guess that makes it a pretty perfect bar throughout because it looks cool on all sides and it was a really fun bar to pour even with the tedious part of putting all the little leaves into the the mold before we that was it still was absolutely enjoyable the finished product of that was just stunning i love this soap i'm super excited to have it in the line now as i said we are doing four different wood grains this week so you can totally pick those all up as a gift set at the end of the four day or you can get them individually so if you are interested in this falling leaf soap you can find it on the website at soapandplay.com if you are interested in following me on social media, I'm there, do the things, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you are interested in more soapy antics and soapy fun and all of the fall awesomeness that we have in store, and trust me, there's a lot of awesomeness because again, fall is my jam. So I'm gonna be making a lot of uh, soaps with the fall, for like the next two months, it's gonna be awesome. You should subscribe to the channel and then you can be notified of when I drop 
a new video and I would appreciate the subscription too. It helps me out in big ways. And uh, for those of you who are subscribed, thank you so much for coming back and joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. I'm glad that you're here. This has been such a cool, fun journey. It's crazy that we're on day 160. That's wild. We're almost at the halfway mark and I think we might actually make it. So that's a lot. And for that today, I am all done. So I will see all of you tomorrow for another round of 365 days of soap where we're making a new wood grain in a completely different way. Bye.